Okay, for this video, we'll be uh, discussing encryption and compression using my SQL. So we all know that encryption is one of the ways that we can protect our data. So the objectives of this video or lecture is to use encryption and compression functions in my SQL queries. So here are some of the encryption functions. So we have the AES decrypt. So this will decrypt using the AES method. We have AES encrypt. So it says here, this will encrypt using AES. Compress returns result as a binary string. MD5, so calculate MD5 checksum. Random bytes return a random byte vector. SHA1 or SHA1 and SHA, these are actually identical, but both will be accepted by MySQL. So this calculate an SHA1 or a 160 bit checksum. We also have the H SHA2, calculate an H SHA2 checksum. Statement digest and statement digest text. These are two related functions. So compute statement digest hash value. And this one compute normalize statement digest. So uh, this is just reverse. Uncompress is to uncompress string compress. So the compress and uncompress are actually related functions. Uncompress length. This will also give us the length of uh, it, uh, in a, if it is uncompressed. Validate password strength to so determine the strength of password. But in this one, uh, you should specify the password uh, policy. Without that, it will always return zero as in my case or in my MySQL uh, that I'm using here at home. So encryption functions. So let's try to read. So main encryption and compression functions return strings for which the result might contain arbitrary byte values or some sort of special characters. If you want to store these results, use a column with a var binary or blob, blob. So blob binary string data, data type. This avoids potential problems with trailing space removal or character set conversion <clears throat> excuse me, that would change data values such as may occur if you use a non-binary string data type, car, bar car, or text. So if you want to store uh, values that are encrypted or compressed, it's better to use blob or var binary. We can use this if you want, but uh, sometimes it would be better to use this. So some encryption functions return string of ASCII characters like MD5, SHA, SHA1, SHA2, statement digest, statement digest text. The return value is a string that has a character set and collation determined by the character set connection and collation collection system variables. This is a non-binary string unless the character set is binary. If an application stores values from a function such as MD5 or SHA1, the return string of hex digits, more efficient storage and comparison can be obtained by converting the hex presentation to binary using an hex. So it will be more efficient. The length will be shorter. And storing the result in binary column. So especially we have bar binary. Each pair of hexadecimal digits require one byte in binary form so this will more or less divide the length into two so the value of n depends on the length of the hex string n is 16 for md5 value and 20 for sha1 and for sha2 n ranges from 28 to 32 depending on the argument specifying the desired bit length of the result now here is a an important note Exploits for MD5 and SHA1 or SHA, these are the same. Algorithms have become known. 
So you may wish to consider using another weight encryption function uh, described in this section instead of instead so such as SHA2. So you try to avoid using MD5 and SHA1 because the exploits of this are already known. So it will not be very secure. So first let us discuss the AES decrypt and AES encrypt. So these are related functions. So this the AES decrypt will need at least two uh, parameters. We have the string and the key. And the same is true with encrypt. We have the string and the key. So but the string here should be the encrypted string. So we, we want to decrypt that. We want to pull it back to normal. But you can only do that if you know the key. So ES encrypt and ES decrypt implement encryption and decryption of data using the official AES or Advanced Encryption Standard Algorithm. Previously known as, I don't know how to pronounce, Regendale. <laughs> the AES standard permits various K lengths. The default this function implement AES with 128-bit key length. Key length of, one, of 196 or 256 bits can be used as described later. The key length is a trade-off between performance and security. Of course, the longer the length, then uh, it is, of course, more secure, but it will affect the performance. So AES encrypt, encrypts a string, SCR, using the key, string, key, string, and returns a binary string containing the encrypted output. AES decrypt, decrypts the encrypted string, so decrypt SCR here, using the key, string, key, SCR, and returns the original plain text string. If either function argument is null, the function returns null. The str and creep str arguments can be any length, and padding is automatically added to str. So it is a multiple of a block as required by block-based algorithms such as AES. This padding is automatically removed by AES decrypt function. The length of the creep str can be calculated using this formula uh, I, I was not able to do that anymore but let's have an example of the AES encrypt and decrypt in our next slide so here uh, in this example so it says here the word ABCDEF was encrypted using the key ABC so this is the encrypted text so if we store this it will inside and somebody was able to gain access on this he will not be able to understand what is this value so that's the purpose of encryption and in the next example similar to the first one except that in the second example uh, the value that we derive here is now also being stored in the variable pw okay so the same the same values but again we already have this variable, the PW or at PW, okay? So that uh, we can use the variable in our next example. So here now, so here we use encrypt, and here we want to decrypt so that we can show the plain uh, values in plain text. So if we decrypt this one, AES decrypt, PW is the this value, and I use a different key. So uh, maybe I was just trying to uh, determine, but I was not given the correct key. So what this function will return is null. That means I have the invalid key or uh, incorrect key string. And here in the second example, so the same as the first one, except that I already used the correct key, key string. So in this case, I was now able to decrypt or display this one in plain text. So that's an example of 
encryption using the AES encrypt. We also have the compression function, so compress and uncompress. So compress returns the result as a binary string, and uncompress uncompresses the string. So as an example, I have here select repeat a 100 times. So just to show you uh, the plain text, so it will show 100 letter A's. Select, compress, repeat A 100 times. So this is, should be 100 A's, but we compress. So the value is this value now. So it is a compressed version. So similarly, I want to store that in a variable. So the same, select, compress, repeat A 100. But I store that in a variable V1. So in this case, it will be the same, but I already have now the variable V1. So if I want to uncompress, uncompress V1 at V1, then it returns 100 A's. So that is my original string. Okay, let's proceed to the next example. Encryption functions. So we have MD5. So calculates an MD5 128-bit checksum for the string. The value is returned as a string of 32 hexadecimal digits. So these are hexadecimal digits. We have 7, 8, so uh, these are hexadecimal numbers. Or null if the argument was null. The return value can, for example, be used as a hash key. See the notes at the beginning of this section about storing hash values efficiently. So, uh, we have discussed that a while ago. So, here is an example. Select MD5, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, this is the value. We also have S. S H E one, uh, S H A one, and S H A. So these are actually synonymous. So these are two of the same functions. So calculates an S H A one one sixty bit checksum for the string, as described in R F C three one seven four, or secure hash algorithm. So S H A stands for secure hash algorithm. The value is returned as a string of 40 hexadecimal digits or null if the argument was null. One of the possible uses for this function is a hash key. So we can use this as our hash key. See the notes at the beginning of the... Uh, so we already have discussed that. So SHA is synonymous or the same as SHA1. That's why to show this, I uh, use both in this function. You notice both return the same value. So we just type SHA and then the string that we would like to encrypt. So this is now the value. Again, a reminder, uh, SHA1 and MD5, uh, there are already known exploits of this. So it will not be advisable for you to use this uh, encryption functions. So we have SH, SHA2. So in this case, we have a string and hash length. So calculates the SHA2 family of hash functions. So we have SHA224. SHA256. SHA384 or and SHA512. So these numbers are actually the hash length we can use. So the first argument is the plain text string to be hashed. The second argument argument indicates the desired bit length of the result, which must have a value of 224. That's why we have SHA224 here. 256, straight 4, 512, or 0. And 0 is actually equivalent to 256. If either argument is null or the hash length is not one of the permitted values, the return value is not. Otherwise, the function result 
is a hash value containing the desired number of bits. So, again, uh, this was what I discussed a while ago. So, select SHA2, ABCD, AFG, 256. So, we have this value. So again, this value can, can, could be either 224, 256, 384, 512, or 0, which is also equivalent to 256. Now, I have here a statement digest, uh, which is not working in my computer, so I'll just show you. So, statement digest statement gives an SQL statement as a string, returns a statement digest hash value as a string in the connection character set or null if the argument is null. The deleted statement digest text function returns the normalized statement digest. So, let's say for example, if you have a select query, and you can actually uh, return the digested hash or statement digest hash value of that particular statement using statement digest. And to put it back to plain text, we can use statement digest text. So, uh, I cannot demonstrate this because it's not working on my it will show an error uh, error in my my sql server but here now is another one well date password strength which is also not working that much because i have to place the some sort of pass validate password component for this one so we have we should have this one so this one for this to work but i'll, I'll just show you how to use that here we have validate password strength given an argument representing a plain text password this function returns an integer to indicate how strong the password is so the return value ranges from zero that means it is a weak password to 100 that means it is a strong password so select validate password strength password is return zero actually it will always return zero because my password component is not installed in my MySQL server. So select validate password strength. So we have this password. Still it is zero. But this is how you use this function. So as a summary, uh, what I've presented here are some of the functions that we can use to encrypt, decrypt, and compress uh, values. So thank you very much for viewing these videos.